Best overall performance by a meringue is the Italian meringue. I use the Chef Alarm. It is very accurate and it really works well for high temperatures. The Italian meringue is a syrup poured over egg white, so you always want to add water to your pot first. Then a third of the sucrose. Nuke the glucose syrup so it releases from your deli cup. And then add the rest of the sucrose. And tap, tap. Do not push or stir. You won't need to use water on the edges of this pan because I am not going to slosh it around and form sugar crystals all over the edge of the pan. I am tapping and watching for those sugar crystals to dissolve. All I have to do is move that spatula just a tiny bit and I can feel grains. So instead of worrying about if I am cooking it too fast or anything, I'm just gonna pull it off the heat or turn the heat way down. I'm also going to check is it getting hotter? Because if it's up around 111 Celsius and you haven't dissolved all of those gritty bits out of the sugar, you're gonna have a gritty meringue when you're done. So it's imperative that you dissolve all of the grittiness, then you crank up the heat. Meanwhile, you can see the meringue is starting to be whipped on low. It starts out frothy and you leave it that way for a while, but as the temp goes up and certainly over 113 Celsius, you're going to get the whip going to medium. We want a nice soft peak. The meringue should be shining. If you go too far, you've dried it out and then it has nowhere to expand. It won't taste good and it won't look good. So the thermocoupler on this digital thermometer goes up to like 700 degrees. So you wanna move it around with it touching the bottom of the pan. You're going to get an accurate accounting if you move it around. Once it got to 121 Celsius or around 200 degrees Fahrenheit, I'm gonna take it off the heat, connect the pot to the bowl. And I am not aiming away from the whip or toward the eggs. I am pouring it down the side of the bowl. This way I can focus on it and the heat keeps it from turning into a sticky sort of mess that creates all kinds of sugar whipped inside of your meringue. I let this whip, you walk away, you let it whip on medium high as it cools down. And once it's cool, it's ready to use. And this is where the fun begins because I just have to say it's absolutely beautiful. You could fold fruit purees into this, food colorings, pipe it indefinitely. I have very often stacked it really thick between layers of cake. You can pipe it with a star tip to look like a porcupine on the outside of a cake. And also, it's shelf stable to the point that if you put it in this deli cup, it doesn't need to be refrigerated or anything for a week. You could just keep serving your s'mores dessert, plated dessert on the plate by using that one deli cup over the course of the week. It is that shelf stable. It won't weep, it won't separate. It's really the best one. So if I had the option, I would never use any other. The Swiss is a warm um, meringue. The French has no heat applied to it. And here the Italian's the hottest. And when I say stable, what I mean is stability is making sure that the water particles in any of your ingredients aren't escaping. If they don't escape, it means that it's stable and it's going to stay together. So you can pipe whatever you want and get really clean, good lines. You could cover an entire cake in this. My absolute favorite trick of Italian meringue is that one-to-one, -one, if you add butter, you have Italian buttercream. So you can make this Italian meringue in advance, days in advance, and you can still turn it into all of these other things. There's no clock ticking, and it's really, really beautiful. So give it a try, see if it really gives you wings to fly in the kitchen because I couldn't live without it.